What's going on guys? Joe from SRHQ. Today I want to talk about watch pocket knives or knives that I like carrying in the watch pocket or fifth pocket of my jeans. Trust me, I'm not alone. There are lots of us that enjoy watch pocket carry. It's not for everybody. It's a very personal thing. Some people don't like a knife in their watch pocket. I don't particularly like one um, when I'm doing things like sitting down or riding a bike. Uh, but if I'm just out and about, you know, I have no problem uh, carrying a knife in my watch pocket. I think the ones on the table here are great representatives of what I like to carry the general size between, you know, two and three quarters to up to three and a quarter uh, inches is where I would like to go with a watch pocket knife. You know, everyone's different. Some people like carrying a bigger knife, having the bolster stick out. Um, I would love to know what you guys carry. Leave me some comments down below. Let's get a conversation going. Let me know what you're carrying. Let me know what is too big for you. What is too small for you. Um, aside from being a small, comfortable knife for a watch pocket knife, I also want it to be capable of doing anything that I would need to do throughout the day at, as far as a knife goes. So I could leave the house with just a watch pocket knife and be fine. And I think all the knives on this table would get me through a day. Um, so I'll just go through them. Um, these, this isn't a top 10 list or anything. You know, there, there's 10 knives on the table and yeah, I just think they're all really good recommendations for watch pocket carry. I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Let's just start with the case Swayback, Swayback Gent, Swayback Jack. This is just the knife that got me started carrying in a watch pocket. This one in particular, this is a single bladed one. Just look how thin it is. This is the longest one that's on the table, three and a quarter inches, but it makes up for that in just how slim it is. It's a very comfortable carry. And you can see with the blade open, it's a very capable blade. Great looking Warren Cliff. This one's in the CV, uh, the carbon steel, and this one is in the stainless steel. This is a two-bladed uh, variety. You get even more utility out of it. Great watch pocket knives. This is about as large as I would go. You know, this is a pretty slender, pretty thin carry. If this knife was as thick and wide as this one, I probably, it would probably be too big for my watch pocket. You know, like I said, it's very personal. You might rock a full-size trapper. Who knows? But yeah, case, Swayback, Gent, Swayback Jack, uh, highly recommended. Let's move up here to a Great Eastern Cutlery. 14 is about the cutoff for me uh, with a watch pocket carry. Could you carry a 15? Could you carry an 85, a 78? Absolutely. There are tons of people that do. Um, just for me personally, 14 is about the size, about as large as I like to go in the watch pocket with a GEC. This is just a great pattern. Simple titty ute. But it looks great. Great looking blade shape. 1095 carbon steel. Love that long pull. Very capable blade. You can see, you know, I'm getting about three and a half fingers on that when I choke up. Very thin profile. Nice, easy, comfortable in the watch pocket. Another GEC. Just did a video on this and I can't even remember what the model number is. Yeah, 25 Barlows. This, they also have the 25 uh, Jack. They have the 26 sleeve board. All of these knives would fall into the same category. I just did a video on this one. Check it out. This is just a little tank. I mean, it's small. Look at that next to the Swayback. It's shorter, but it's wider. It's more substantial. So anything thicker than this, you know, it starts getting a little uncomfortable in the watch pocket, says me. Uh, so a full-size uh, two-springed, something like that would just be too big. I have this one here. This is the only two-spring knife I have on the table. This is a Schrade USA old-timer, junior stockman. Yeah, this one you're getting the utility of three blades. You're getting the clip point blade. Great for slicing, making holes and stuff, whatever you need to do. You're getting a sheep's foot blade. This thing is a mean box cutter, opens clamshell packaging, super easy. And this one, you're not getting a spay blade, you're getting a pen blade. So yeah, do whatever you want with it. Keep it sharp. It is an extremely sharp backup blade. Abuse it, 
do your scraping, do your prying with, with this blade, you know, you, whatever you want to do, whether you want to keep it pristine or use it as a beater blade, the choice is up to you. But I love these classic Schrade USA old timers with the saw cut dull run. Just take a look at that. Really great knife, really great option for in the watch pocket, if you ask me. Let's move to a German knife. This is a Hartkopf. Friedrich Hartkopf. Very cool little lockback. This one's a fancy one, man. You got these horn scales. Fit and finish is just phenomenal. Stainless steel, super high polished. You know, this is more of, I would say, a fancy carry. Church carry, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> yeah, when you feel like being a little fancy, you can throw something like this in your pocket. Great little option. Friedrich Hartkopf. I think this is a two and a half inch. Maybe this is two and three quarter inch. But yeah, overall, really, really um, impressed with the knives from Hartkopf. They're readily available where I live in Munich, Germany. I have probably, I don't know, 10 knife shops within a 15 minute bike ride from my house. And I think every single one of them sells Friedrich Hartkopf. I have a couple more. Maybe I'll, I'll bust them out and do some videos on them. Uh, let's go to a more budget option. Let's talk about the Rough Riders. Both of these knives, let's just say, were 10 bucks or under. But that being said, I think they are very capable watch pocket knives. This is a little mini canoe. Same size as a case butterbean. Case butterbean would also be a great option for in the watch pocket. There's two blades on a single spring. Yeah, Rough Rider just did a good job on it. It's not too small. It's not too thick. The main blade is large enough, you know, to get you through your boxes, uh, you know, get you through your day, whatever, your open letters, open packages, whatever you need to do. Um, the only thing that these aren't going to be great at is, I would say, food prep. Um, you could do light food prep with it, small food prep, but, you know, you're not going to be cutting through, I don't know, a, a pumpkin with one of these. I mean, I guess you could... Uh, if you really put your mind to it, but that's not the intention. But yeah, Rough Rider Mini Canoe. Look at that tortoise shell acrylic. Yeah, just overall a really cool knife, and it's like 10 bucks. I have two of these. I also have one in white smooth bone, and I can say both of them are top notch as far as fit and finish, action, everything. Highly recommend the Case Mini Canoe. Now let's move to this one. This one's a relatively new one. In my collection and i didn't know about it i didn't know it, it existed i have the large one i use that a lot in my leather working basically this blade's really good for cutting around the corners of leather so i'd have a squared off leather piece i would trace a curved line uh, where i want to make the corner and you know i just set this knife up and just rock it forward all the way around that corner and for me cotton sampler is a great blade for my leather work. This one had um, tobacco, smooth bone. It was really, really poorly done. It was a little bit darker on this side, really bleached out and light on this side. Maybe I'll put some pictures in if I still have them. But I re-dyed this. I basically just threw it in red writ dye and let it sit for about two hours. I I like the color. It's It's much more pleasing for me. And you know, it's my knife. It's it only has to please whoever is carrying it, right? Yeah, makes it kind of special. One of one, Messer HQ exclusive. Let's call this Strawberry Blonde Smooth Bone. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Yeah, overall, this is just a really cool, you know, conversation piece, but also a very capable knife. Tons of belly. If you're doing draw cuts all the time or if you're doing arts and crafts that require curved cuts, this blade would be really good. I've also heard a lot of people say the cotton sampler is a really good skinning blade. So if you're a hunter, let me know if that blade profile would be beneficial for skinning. Yeah, Rough Rider small cotton sampler. Highly recommend it. I've seen a couple um, videos on the small one and all of the bone uh, looked really bad in every single video that I saw. So literally all I did, boiled some water, put in a package of red writ dye, chucked the entire knife in. Don't worry, it's not going to dye the stainless steel or the nickel silver. It's just going to dye the bone. And I just let it sit for like two hours. 
and you can do that with any um, knife. Yeah, very cool. Uh, another GEC we can talk about. This is the 06 Pemberton. Great little swell center. Little tiny Coke bottle frame with a very useful Warncliffe blade. Nice thin profile. Just disappears in the watch pop pocket. Disappears in the regular pocket as well. Just a really good option. And of course, it's built with the GEC quality. What other knives haven't I talked about? I think the only one left is a toothpick. And I probably save that for the last because I typically don't carry a small toothpick. But I figured a lot of you guys might. So I wanted to throw in one and show you guys. This is a Baron Sons. Really great looking bone. This one's in carbon steel. Fit and finish is okay on it. The, the centering is off. I don't like the placement of the nail nick. It's, it's too close to the pivot. I wish it was here. It's kind of hard to open this knife. But overall, as far as a small toothpick goes, I like this blade profile. Blade profile. I don't have a Rough Rider one here to show you, but it's a much skinnier blade. But yeah, this would be a very capable knife. You know, it would get you through your day. For me, it's just a little bit too small and a little bit too skinny in the hand. I don't feel like I get the purchase that I do on the other ones that I have on the table. But definitely a very capable option nonetheless. So yeah, guys, that was some watch pocket knives for you guys. You know, if you guys want to see an in-depth review on any of the ones on this table, go ahead and let me know. But yeah, if you just want to get started... Carrying a, a knife in your watch pocket, see how it feels. If you want to, if you want to join the club, uh, I would I would suggest starting off with one of these uh, or a similar one. Rough Rider has a small Barlow, just you know any kind of smaller knife, that, but that's also large enough to be capable of doing normal tasks. So yeah, you might want to start with one of these. These are you know a little bit more expensive. You can get these relatively cheap. You just have to search for them on eBay. You can also get the newer uh, Chinese made variety. If if you want to, and they're also, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, I don't know. The GECs are always going to be um, a little bit rare, a little bit more expensive, but they're out there. Um, you, you can find them. They, they just go for a, for a premium. Definitely check out some Friedrich Hartkopf. Baron Sons, you know, I don't know if I can recommend them or, or not. You know, I, I have this knife from them. I think I have another Barlow from them, and they're just okay. Um, they make a decent quality knife. So yeah, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to let me know what you guys are carrying in your watch pocket down in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.